Ha! Huh. I've got a problem. My sofa's ripped. It doesn't seem like much, but having two toddlers running around, it's just a matter of days before very little hands will start to reach inside and pulling out things, all rip this thing completely. But no, 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 no. I'm not throwing the sofa away. I'm gonna turn this into this. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go back and make it happen. The legs will come off first. They're held with a handful of wood screws, so I'll get onto those. The fabric is stapled to the wooden frame, and the plan is to reuse the damaged parts. This means that I cannot just simply rip off the layers. I'll have to go through the paint and undo each and every staple one by one. I've done the bottom, but this is just the beginning, so let's carry on. What's been mere seconds for you, lasted a gazillion staples for me, so I'm really excited to finally be able to take a leather imitation off. Surprise surprise, the cushioning is also held down with staples, but since this layer is not gonna be visible, I can afford using a utility knife to move faster. And once that's off, I'm left with bare bones. I can now cut the frame to the required width. Now before I get rid of the half I'm not gonna use, I need to take off its side, which holds the hinge. If I'm careful enough, I will be able to reattach it to the good half as a single piece. But it's easier said, as it's secured in place with nasty 4cm staples. I'll need a crowbar for this. It's a struggle, but the good guys win. This is what I'm left with. And once I nail it to the rest of the frame, you wouldn't tell it had been anything else. Alright, let's make it into a cyborg. I want to put the Bluetooth speaker into the chair, and I've done something I never do. I bought a new working appliance, just to strip it for parts. Feel somehow wrong. I usually fix when something's broken, or at most, get something secondhand. But the color and the shape played so well in my vision, I just couldn't resist. Anyway, it's done. Let's get cracking. To reach the electronics, I first need to pry the front cover off with a screwdriver. Next, I need to undo a small number of screws. The 8 segment LED display can now be unhooked from its ribbon cable. Now I should be able just to pop it open. And voila! I can now extract the main PCB, the speakers, a battery and two LEDs which you'll see what they do when I'm done. The required modifications for the electronics are actually quite minimal. All I need to do is just extend the wires. In the case of a display, it's a matter of finding longer ribbon cable. Though finding one that's long enough proved to be much more difficult than I thought. But I've got one. As for the rest, I'll just need to solder extensions. And this particular one is for the speaker. But apart from extensions, I want to make a USB charger as an added feature. And to accomplish this, I'm soldering a couple of wires on a female USB breakout board, whereas I hook up the other ends to the relevant pins of the micro USB on the speaker control board. Before I can attach electronics to the frame, I need to make holes for the speakers, the controls, and the display. But let me spare you from watching me cutting holes, and here's the outcome. Most places were hard to access, and some wood had metal staples in it, so I had to use a range of tools to get it done, hence the rough appearance. This little hole is for charging, but I had to carve a little wooden piece to hold the connector centered, and you're seeing me gluing it in place. On the other side, I used spare plastic from the speaker box to make a little lid. With that sorted, I'm feeding the speaker wires through the respective speaker hole, followed by the speaker itself. It's a perfect fit, as I used the rotary tool to accomplish this. Next, it's time for the plastic cover with the LED, which I cut out from the original case. And both the cover and the speaker will be held in place by four little screws. As for the front display, you can tell, the preparation work was a little bit more involved. But that now allows me to plug a new ribbon cable into the LED display and secure it all with the original screws. That just leaves the controls. 
And once I feed the wires from the LEDs and the speakers, I can plug the connectors back to the original PCB. And once I plug the ribbon cable from the display in, the PCB can go back to its original compartment, into what's now a section of the original speaker box, which is meant to fit snugly in the hole I made and be secured with wood screws. Notice here the little hole right next to the screw. Its purpose and the purpose of all the other such will become apparent shortly, but let me finish off first. I'll wrap the battery in electrical tape and staple it to the frame. And I'll do the same for the loose wiring. Finally, in terms of electronics, I'm only left with securing the USB charging port with a couple of screws. So now, let's dress the lady up. First, the cushioning layer, where I cut the original to length with a pair of scissors. As for the top layer, I cut the original at its seams, threw out the unnecessary bits and sewn it back together. Of course, I could have tried and gotten access to a sewing machine, but since all the cool kids sew by hand, so did I. Now, it's time to replace all the staples I've taken out in the beginning of the project. Just bear with me. Oh, and by the way, have you noticed that the dimples on the surface of my sofa were made by pulling on these fabric extensions? They are sewn onto the bottom of the top layer and pulled straight through the cushioning. And I'm doing the same for my chair. The design has a clever way of concealing the exposed staples. It uses a narrow strip of padding which runs all around the sofa. It then gets folded onto itself and stapled at the bottom. And it's not long until I finish the whole thing. The legs go back to their own corners. They get secured with the original screws. And if I wanted a regular chair, I could call it right here. But I don't, do I? So let's continue working. I need to expose all the elements I added in. Let's start with the speakers. I'm using a utility knife to get through the layers. And I've just replaced the blade because I want to be precise. If I make the hole too big, that would be catastrophic. So I'll take my time. Now remember the little holes I mentioned earlier? They align the holes in these aluminum covers I made. This means that I can slide pop rivets all the way through the metal, fabric and plastic. And when I pop them, not only do I secure everything in place, but I also get a nice, stylish finish. Pretty clever. Oh, and this looks awesome. Next, the front display. Same idea. Finally, I go through the same drill on the control buttons. I wish I had access to a laser cutter. Cutting these aluminum parts would have made much simpler. Well, maybe one day. In any case, it just shows that it can be done by hand. I cut the shape with a jigsaw and refine it with a file. And in my eyes, the parts turned out great. So, let's turn the lights off. Bluetooth mode pairing paired. Let's go the up and enjoy the fruits of my labor for a little bit. Front display shows time and the active mode. And I'm sure you figured what the LEDs on the speakers do. The controls help me cycle through the tracks and the input modes. The chair reclines to suit my ever-changing needs. It does need to be plugged in every now and then to keep the party going. But it supports a number of input devices, from a USB drive to a micro SD card. And I can charge my phone. What else I could ask for? This turned out to be my favorite project so far. 
And if you enjoyed it, please don't hesitate and click that like button. Also, please consider subscribing to get me all hyped up and inspired to bring you more cool projects like this. As for now, thanks for watching.